Hello and welcome to a video covering a bunch of account goals for new players. More specifically members, but some of the goals in this video are also applicable to free-to-play accounts. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. First up, we have the player-owned farm, requiring level 17 construction and level 20 farming to start off with. Now, the reason I recommend unlocking this area so early on is because it's a passive way of training farming, which you can do every day without too much effort. Let's say about five minutes of work every day and you'll train farming pretty much passively. It comes down to growing animals from baby to elder, then harvesting them for experience and items, and continuing the process. You can also breed animals, later down the line dinosaurs, and this also opens up some money-making opportunities once your farming level goes up as well. All in all, a great thing to unlock as early as possible. Next up, we have the Wilderness Easy Achievements, which are a great way of getting some experience and some skills you are level 30 in. Now, although you can do this achievement set at level 1 in all skills, I recommend doing it at level 30 because you get two experience lamps, granting 10,000 experience each, which you can use in any skill of your choosing of level 30 or higher. You also get the Wilderness Sword 1, which has the ability to locate the Hellfire Bow and Wildy Worm. Not that interesting for you as a new player, but what is interesting are the free teleports to the Wilderness Her Patch and free teleports teleports to Edgewell. These will be useful later down the line when training farming and runecrafting. Next up we have training agility more specifically to level 21 as a starting point to get access to some important shortcuts like the Varrock Underworld Tunnel that leads you to the Grand Exchange, the Falada Wall shortcut and the Underworld Tunnel in Yanil. These are some important shortcuts you're going to want to have for a variety of things including quests or just moving around faster. If you don't know how to train agility, you can get started in birth rope or just check my agility training guide linked in the description below. This will also give you more information about the skills as a whole. Next up, we have getting level 5 Archaeology. Now, Archaeology is RuneScape's newest skill, and this skill allows you to get 500 more life points permanently by simply completing the tutorial and getting level 5 Archaeology. You can start the tutorial by heading east from the Varrock Lodestone and talking to this NPC right here for the archaeology tutorial. The one standing on the dock with the icon above his head. To get the 500 life points boost, you're going to need to give a Centurion's Dress Sword to Velusia right here in front of the board. That NPC, she'll give you the Mortal Cup, which you can offer to the Monolith in the middle of this area after you have level 5 Archaeology. You can then activate the Relic and have the boost permanently for 1,000 Kronos, which you should have at that point. Now, level 5 Archaeology also means you can go ahead and train Archaeology and sell the materials you get on the Grand Exchange for some starting cash. This is the second reason why I'm mentioning Archaeology as a early game goal for a Accounts because it's great for both free to play and pay to play players. Next up, we have level 43 Prayer, one of the most useful things to get early on because it's going to make all kinds of combat training a lot easier. This will give you access to protect from magic, protect from missiles, and protect from melee prayers, which reduce attacks by that combat style coming in by 50% when active. This will not only make combat training easier, but it will also save you money on food because you'll be taking 50% less damage. Definitely something I would recommend getting early on. If you don't know how to train prayer, be sure to check my guide linked in the description below. But that being said, prayer comes down to scattering ashes and burying bones in free to play, and for members offering bones or ashes on a gilded altar. It's really simple actually. Next up we have getting level 50 combat stats. Now this is a good point to aim for to get a feel for all the different combat styles and abilities. Now in members training combat is a little different as you can do a lot of quests to get your stats boosted up very quickly. In free to play it's not so much the case and you're going to be training regularly but if you're a free to play player watching this video at that point at level 50 combat stats if you enjoy the game enough i would suggest getting membership because you've done pretty much all the free to play combat content at that point the reason i recommend this as a starter goal is really simple it will give you an idea of what the combat is like and if you like the game combat wise or not if you don't there's always quests and skilling but if you don't like the combat and you're in it for the combat you will know that this game isn't for you that's really important to know early on. Now, speaking of those quests, one of which, in members, is the Waterfall quest, which will bring you from level 1 to 30 attack and strength after completing the quest. And yes, you can do this on a level 3 account. This quest is ridiculously good to do early on, and it will save you a lot of time. Now, there's plenty more quests like this in RuneScape, where you don't have very high requirements, or you don't have any requirements, and then you just get boosted up to a certain level after completing the quest, which is really important early on, Quests are the way to go. Some other notable examples, some of which are free to play, some of which aren't, are the Witch's House, Tree Gnome Village, Vampire Slayer, Imp Catcher, the Blood Pact, 
and of course the Knight's Sword. These are some good quests, some give you skilling experience and some give you common experience. Next up we have unlocking Menaphos which is really important to get access to mid-level training methods later on. Now this area requires two and a half quests, being the Stolen Hearts quest, Diamond in the Rough and then a partial completion of the Jack of Spades quest but you might as well complete it fully because it will give you some experience rewards and some free Church Hunter keys. Now these quests don't really have any requirements, they're really simple to do, all you need to do is kill a few enemies and maybe need an item or two or some armor. Really simple to do and highly recommended to do early on. Now to get access to the city you will require membership. Next up we have a quest continuing through the desert series being the smoking kills quest. Now this will give you double the slayer points from each slayer task. Very important to get once you've basically established yourself in runescape. Don't worry about getting this done super early on but when you start training slayer beyond level 35 get this quest done because it requires level 35 slay and 25 crafting and trust me for the mid to end game this is really important for the slayer mask to cancel tasks prefer them block them whatever it doesn't matter you're going to need a lot of slayer points now as a new player you should definitely try and unlock as many lodestones as you can while walking past them these pad things as they are the primary form of transportation around runescape and we have one in particular that's a little harder to unlock which i want to mention and the final early game goal of this video is to unlock the anachronia lodestone you get here by heading east from the varog lodestone to the varog dig site Once here you take the ship to Anachronia, once on the island follow the path to the east until you come across some bones, investigate those bones to move forward. Once you've done that continue east until you see some kind of large footprint, I can't actually show you this by the way because I've already unlocked the area. Then take the north path as one path will be blocked off by a rock. Follow the footprints until you see another set of bones. Click those bones to start a cutscene and after that cutscene you should be in the base camp. Once here talk to Giles and go through the tutorial and after that you should have a good idea of what it's like. The base camp managing aspect of Anachronia. Now to unlock the lodestone you're going to need 150 stone and 150 clay. This is a time gated bit of content so just put some workers on stone and clay and in the meantime just go explore the island. Since workers gather 60 resources per hour and you should have access to 10 of them at the start, you should put 5 of them on stone, 5 of them on clay, and you should be able to create your lodestone after about 30 minutes. And with that being said, we have come to the end of this video. I hope these goals will help you get started in RuneScape, and if you ever have any questions, remember the RuneScape wiki is out there, it's in-depth, and it is there to help you with pretty much anything. If that doesn't help, a video of mine or perhaps a question in my Discord probably will. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.